we were told when GMOs hit the market that this was going to help uh, the, the, the world population. Uh, we were going to be able to grow crops in places that we hadn't been able to or more effectively anyway and increase yields so people wouldn't be hungry. That was one of the big selling points. Has there been any reality to that over the quarter century that they've been around? We now know that it's not something that's going to feed the world. The, the United Nations and the World Health Organization and others have created a uh, report called the ISTAD report a number of years ago which said GMOs basically have nothing to offer to feed the hungry world, eradicate poverty, or create sustainable agriculture. It was con it totally rejected out of hand for the current generation. It actually does not increase yield on average. In some cases, it reduces yield. Uh, and so if there is an increased yield, it's just in a very, very small uh, small number of crops, and it's, in one case, 0.3% increase per year. 0.3%. Whereas agroecological practices, which is what the report recommended, can double yields, double yields in developing countries. And the, the GMO crops concentrate the power in corporate hands, it eliminates biodiversity, it increases the use of toxic herbicides, it destroys the soil, microbiota, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's all been a lie this concept that it's supposed to feed the world. It actually works against it. It takes money that's important to feed the world and diverts it into this high-tech thing. For example, there was one called golden rice, which is supposed to provide vitamin A for vitamin A deficient people. Well, you can actually feed one pill per six months, two pills a year, to people with vitamin A deficiency and prevent blindness, high dose, mega doses of vitamin A. And they've used that. They've also used creating local farms and teaching people how to create gardens that have the biodiversity, not just for the vitamin A, but for a variety of important nutrients. It's been so effective in other, other ways to combat it that it was taken off of a severe list because concerted efforts have been done to clear that up. Whereas this golden rice, first of all, it's never been proven to actually reduce vitamin A deficiency because it requires a conversion of beta carotene to vitamin A, which usually requires fats in the diet. The same people that are vitamin A deficient don't get fats for making that conversion. Second of all, the process of genetic engineering causes all potential side effects, so it might be more dangerous than the vitamin A deficiency that it's supposed to cure. <coughs> and finally, it has never been proved to actually have a good crop. It's failed at the level of the field, so it isn't even ready after more than a decade and $100 million. But it's the cover of Time magazine because of the, the uh, underhanded and, and uh, manipulative ways that the biotech industry uses media and misinformation to try and drive a, a message to us saying, oh, we have to feel guilty and promote GMOs because someday at some point in some future time it might benefit someone.